One question that is being asked over and over again is the question about Bitcoin mining and the Lightning Network. Apparently, it seems that some people fear that Bitcoin mining will stop being profitable as soon as everybody uses the Lightning Network and when payments happen on the Lightning Network, they don't trigger an on-chain transaction anymore. I mean, that seems to a first degree like a reasonable thought experiment. Bitcoin miners currently have two income sources. One is the block reward, but this one is decreasing with the halvings over the time. And supposedly by the end of the day, um, Bitcoin miners are supposed to be profitable on the mining fees. If all the transactions happen off-chain, then we won't have any blockchain transactions anymore, and then the miners won't get any fees, there won't be any block reward. And so it seems, if you don't think about this any further, that uh, Bitcoin mining would not be a profitable endeavor anymore, and then the Bitcoin network might die out, or, well, actually Lightning becomes not usable anymore, because if there's no Bitcoin miners, there's no security in the Lightning network. So this really seems to be an important question to tackle. One thing that we should note is that with the current design of the Bitcoin network, we can only handle a certain amount of blockchain transactions per day or per second or per hour or whatever ratio you want to use to calculate this. We have seen in the past several times that this really hinders adoption because as soon as more and more people wanted to use the Bitcoin network, um, there was not enough block space available and then the fee market kicked in and fees became so expensive that for average transactions it was just not useful to do a Bitcoin transaction anymore. Of course people will start to argue let's just increase the block space or let's decrease the block time and do stuff like that. This myth as a scaling strategy has been debunked several times. You can watch my video here where I explained this so I will not go down further this direction. I will just emphasize that we don't do that for good reasons. However, if we don't do that and we don't have the Lightning Network, then Bitcoin can never be a widespread payment system or an electronic cash system as it was called in the original paper. We need a Lightning Network for actually people to use Bitcoin, to transact with Bitcoin um, on a regular and daily basis. My main argument is that the Lightning Network makes Bitcoin way more useful than everyday life. It actually opens the Bitcoin network to a much broader set of people and it helps people to use Bitcoin. By that you have more and more people also using the Lightning Network because you can do instant payments, instant settlement. You know when you send Bitcoin it's gone, you know when you receive Bitcoin it's there, you don't have to wait for block confirmations or anything. However, in order to utilize the Lightning Network you need at least one and technically by the end of the day also a second blockchain transaction which is to open and to close a payment channel. Without opening a payment channel, you can't use the Lightning Network, unless, of course, you do a custodial solution, but that works in Bitcoin already anyway, and that's not what we're here to talk about. What I would argue is, for a regular transfer of money, a high mining fee or a high fee doesn't make sense to a user. If I want to transfer, let's say, 50 US dollars worth of Bitcoin, it doesn't make sense if I have to pay a 50 US dollar worth of mining fee. However, if I want to open a payment channel that stays open for the next 20 years that I can use to send money back and forth all the time, I might be very well willing to pay such a high fee. Right? People pay already fees to open and maintain a bank account or um, people pay a fee for um, a lawyer to oversee a contract. And as I explained in another video, you can check it out here, with the Lightning Network, the Bitcoin Network actually changes its purpose or its role. Initially, Bitcoin was just used for transfer of money. And now with the Lightning Network, it much more becomes um, a court system or a judge in the court system. And it oversees contracts. It oversees the payment channels. And it makes sure that the payment channel owners really play by the rule. And this is a really useful service where people might be willing to actually pay higher fees for. And again, if you have more and more people using Bitcoin because it finally becomes extremely useful, I mean, it was already useful before the Lightning Network, but it becomes extremely useful in everyday life um, with the Lightning Network, well, you have more people who actually have demand to open channels. So I would argue that there is still a demand for on-chain transactions even with the Lightning Network. And I would also argue that uh, people are actually willing to pay a higher price for on-chain transactions to open a payment channel than for just regular payments.
Obviously, I don't have my glass ball here and I cannot see in the future. I can just make some educated guesses. So I'm interested in your opinions on this. Maybe you think there is a much better and deeper argument why on-chain fees will not disappear or why the Bitcoin network will not die out when the Lightning network is being used and most payments take place on the Lightning network. I encourage you not to do this discussion about big blocks. Um, if there are some trolls coming, just don't feed them, ignore them, because um, I'm tired of that discussion. Also, um, as many of you already know, I moved to Norway, where I'm currently doing research about pathfinding on the Lightning Network. This is really cool. Um, one slight disadvantage is that currently I don't have my entire video equipment here, so we have this rather different video. Um, the good news is I will probably have a little bit more time in future to do more videos and also we started working again on mastering the Lightning Network. So I'm very happy uh, that I can work more on Bitcoin education. If you want to support my work, please make sure to check out my Patreon page or my Telecom page because all this work is really heavily supported by you guys and I'm very grateful that you are supporting that work. Um, that being said, have a great time.